Another meeting to another meeting to start up shortly afterwards. Uh, work never ends these days because <clears throat> somebody called an election. <laughs> But um, so I'll call the meeting to order and uh, at uh, 5.01, and if Sally, you could do a roll call, that would be good. Okay, uh, Jeff Atkinson. I'm here. Janet Mason. Here. Faye Campbell. Present. Bev Holmes. Bev is not on the line. Oh, there you are. She's here. Mary. Present, sorry. Wonderful. Uh, John Crow. Present. Paul Kehoe. Present. Krista Lowry. Present. Phil Sweetnam. Present. Kirby Thompson. No. Okay. Uh, Roxanne Darling. Okay. Uh, Glenn Gower. Here. John Inglis. Here. Uh, um, Ms. Kelsey. Here. There you are. Great. Uh, Bill King. Nope. Uh, Chuck Rigelhoff. Present. And Andrew Tennant. I'm here. Okay. Terrific. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So, um, um, and Eli Alshantir is here too, Sally. Oh, I skipped you. I'm so sorry, Eli. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Count them twice. There you go. Okay, that being done with, uh, this is the opportunity for any declarations of conflict of interest uh, at this point in the meeting. Please uh, state, state your declaration now or forever hold your peace. Okay, seeing none, we have one item of business on the agenda today, or work as I'd like to call it. Uh, it's the Shabamika Lake Dam uh, project tender results. And uh, Euro will be uh, leading the presentation on that. So I will hand the floor over to Euro. Okay, thank you, uh, Jeff. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. All right, fantastic. So I, I prepared a few slides, so let me uh, share my screen. Uh, okay, uh, can you um, Got it. see my screen? Yes, we can. I can. Okay. Fantastic. Um, Jeff, you're muted. I was just checking with Cindy to see if she had access to the screen or was only joining us by phone. Okay. All right. So uh, just, it's Cindy and I'm just on phone. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Euro. Okay. So I will try to keep this short as I'm aware, you know, um, it's getting late in the day and uh, some of you may have plans for the evening. So uh, uh, real quickly, a uh, brief uh, background uh, for on, on Shabo Mika. So uh, the tendering of this uh, project was approved uh, by the board uh, back in March 2021, conditional on uh, receiving uh, provincial funding. Uh, MECA received the uh, confirmation from Becky that our grant application was successful in June. Uh, the permitting uh, process was then finalized in June, July 2021. Uh, the public tender was posted in July and, and, and the process closed in uh, August last month. And then uh, MCA opened uh, bids uh, basically uh, September 1st, last Wednesday. So that's really, in a nutshell, the background. Um, this... Um, Tender results are summarized in this table. Uh, MBCA received three bids. Uh, and before we look at these numbers, I just want to uh, say that in our 2021 capital budget, we uh, carried 1.5 million uh, for this project. And uh, uh, the pre-tender class A estimate that we uh, received from the consultant came very close to this number, was sitting at 1.556. So the difference is only about $50,000 between uh, the class A and, 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 and the project uh, budget that we had. But as you see in this, um, in this table, all three bits significantly exceeded uh, the capital project budget. The lowest bit was 2.7 million, which is over, which is 
one million over our, our project budget, right? <laughs> Uh, and on top of that, all bits uh, had project schedules non-compliant with our uh, contractors uh, uh, with completion dates, as you see, extending well beyond uh, the Wiki uh, expenditure deadline, which is March 2022. Um, so we believe you know the key reasons explaining these results is you know first it's the uh, the covid elevated prices we see it everywhere not just in the construction uh, sector in in construction especially steel and any metal fabrication seems to be particularly affected these days uh, but it's also the uh, unstable construction market, right, and the continued uh, high demand for construction services, which might explain the low number of bids that we received, right. And, and last but least, you know, project timelines, you know, uh, we are aware that the Becky Khan application uh, approval and the permitting process uh, push the construction schedule into fall and winter. But, you know, resulting in higher risks for uh, contractors associated with uh, cold weather um, construction and also insufficient time, right, to secure uh, supply of materials or any uh, fabrication that is required for this uh, construction, right? So this would all in combination uh, drive the prices up. So uh, what uh, is really our mitigation? Uh, I, I, the existing uh, Shabomika uh, dam uh, consists, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but uh, basically consists of the South Earth Embankment. Then we have the concrete control structure in this uh, right here. And then we have the, uh, the North Earth Embankment. And uh, the study that was completed in 2015, uh, the was the latest uh, dam safety assessment basically identified that the biggest uh, risk of dam failure is uh, associated with uh, uh, earth embankments. And this is for the two reasons. The first reason is seepage that has been uh, observed uh, on at this structure for some time. And, you know, the seepage can uh, lead to internal uh, erosion and that can uh, develop into piping failure. Uh, and piping failure is, is basically the most common cause of earth uh, dam uh, failures. Uh, and in piping failure, basically, you know, uh, the internal erosion will, will develop, develop a hole within the uh, embankment um, that would cause uh, the collapse. And, and the second reason uh, is, is the settlement, both we, which we, we, we have been observing at this, um, at this uh, structure. And the settlement is basically means that we are losing our freeboard, right? So in the case of some extreme event, there is a risk of overtopping this structure because you know like the, the structure is settling down and the and, and, and actually in 2002 Shabumika then was overtopped right and there was a, a, a damage uh, associated with this overtopping luckily you know that the did not uh, fail at that time but again overtopping is is, is uh, with piping are the two most common causes of, of failures for earth uh, dams uh, you know, which, uh, the, you know, once the structure overtops, the hydrodynamic forces can cause, you know, a washout. So, so uh, considering um, these uh, risks, you know, of, of failure, I, our plan, I guess, to mitigate this risk uh, and at the same time deal with this current market situation is to... Uh, is to adopt a phased approach for, for the dam uh, construction. Uh, and, and what this means is that basically in phase one, we would uh, proceed with the earthworks and we would construct the uh, south and north embankments. We would uh, install a cutoff wall, uh, soil cement bentonite cutoff wall, which you can see right uh, running in the middle of the uh, embankments here which would basically uh, uh, stabilize the embankments and also uh, will create basically an impervious wall that would uh, eliminate any seepage 
uh, that we, we see now. And we would also proceed and we would uh, construct an emergency spillway at that point. Uh, the existing, we would, we would keep the existing uh, uh, control structure in place. And this is important because this will maintain full functionality uh, of this structure, you know, for lake level control, for our water management, for our flood mitigation and all that. So we would not, we would not be uh, losing any functionality uh, with this structure. And then uh, the actual, uh, actual concrete uh, structure. So uh, basically the concrete and steel uh, work would be uh, addressed uh, in phase two at some later time once we go, once we uh, move out of this, uh, um, you know, volatile market and one, one, once prices will, will stabilize. So uh, this next slide basically just summarizes these two phases and uh, as I said, you know, the phase one is then uh, the earthwork um, consisting of embankment, scatterfall, and emergency spillway, uh, which would effectively mitigate the risk of failure at this point. We would be proceeding with tendering this uh, actually now for construction this fall and winter 2021. Now, also, this would result in a reduced scope of work, which uh, we uh, expect would potentially attract more contractors to uh, respond to our tender call and and hopefully with uh, resulting in more competitive and affordable uh, bids. And I guess uh, also this reduced and simplified uh, scope of work would uh, would uh, result in a schedule that will be more manageable and compatible with the uh, wiki. Uh, expenditure deadline. So the phase two then uh, would be, as I said, the control structure itself. And this is the, the, the portion of the construction which is most vulnerable to this uh, market situation, right? This is where we see the, the, the increase in, in the cost and also and, uh, restrictions for our construction schedule. So this, this phase two would be then deferred until Later time, once you know the market stabilizes and we see uh, uh, normal prices, or it's also an opportunity to uh, defer these uh, constructions of phase two until such time that our capital plan will identify this uh, residual risk as being a priority. So, uh, what are the recommended steps then? Uh, so the first is, you know, cancel this tender. Basically, we will be rejecting all bids that we received. Then we would adopt this phase uh, construction approach as I uh, described. Um, then uh, we would uh, tender phase one now. Uh, so we would proceed with construction uh, this, this fall and utilize the uh, provincial funding that we have. So we would not lose the funding. We would uh, need to update the Becky funding agreement. Uh, I see already uh, uh, reached out to uh, the Becky committee and uh, we have been uh, uh, said that uh, there should not be any, any issues with uh, proceeding with the really scope of work. Uh, and we would also need to be uh, updating our permit approvals. Again, we, we already uh, reached out to MNRF who is uh, uh, approval agency for the Lakes and Rivers Improvement Act permit. And uh, again, we were told that uh, we would not need to uh, apply for a new permit. And basically the permit that we already received would be uh, still uh, applicable to this work. So, uh, so that's really in a nutshell uh, uh, our, our recommended next steps. And, uh, and I, uh, that's, that's the last slide. And, uh, Please let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, thank you, Yura. And I think I, I would like to congratulate the staff for, for just uh, putting the work in on this pivot and being able to present us with a, a plan B in light of the, situ the circumstances we find ourselves in. So what I'm going to do to proceed <clears throat> is I'm looking for a motion, basically a motion to approve the recommended next steps as you can see in slide six. And um, <clears throat> if I could get a motion to approve the recommended next steps 
a mover and a seconder. I will uh, we'll proceed with the discussion. I can move to recommend, Chuck Riggelhoff. Okay, Chuck recommending, and I see Phil's hands up as well to second. And for, for speaking to, uh, if you have any questions or comments, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand using the reactions <clears throat> icon at the bottom of your screen. So you can raise your yellow hand, that will help me keep the speakers list. If you do have any questions or comments on the motion, so raise your hands if you would like to speak. And uh, I will also recognize because Cindy's participating via phone, I'm gonna ask her if she would like, if she has any questions or comments first. Can I have no questions or comments, thank you. Thank you. Can we unshare the screen so we yeah. can see everybody? Thank you, Janet, that's, yeah, there we go. Thank you. Okay, I have, um, I have John going first and then Phil, you will go after him. Um, I'm a little concerned that we're gonna to try to put out a request for bids at this point in the season. Uh, we're, we're talking about getting this work done during the winter. Is this really feasible? Um, I I'd, I'd question the um, prospects of getting a number of competitive bids on this just simply because of the time of year. Uh, that's one comment. My second comment is what are we doing about advising uh, waterfront owners about reducing lake levels? The last they heard was uh, it was going to start now. Yeah, so these are good questions, and uh, I, 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 my, my concern with moving the construction in winter would be if we if we proceed with a full scope of work, right? Uh, especially, you know, pouring concrete in winter it would be would have some significant cost implications. But if we limit the the, the scope of work to earthworks only, really, you know, we we still feel that this 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 can be you know manageable even if the construction goes into early winter, right? Like the the idea is to proceed with retendering like as soon as possible and you know and keep the tender within two, three weeks. So hopefully by end of this month we could uh, award the work and start a construction in early October. Uh, and the second uh, question was about the lake level. So uh, we actually, uh, because of uh, this delay uh, and, the, and the results of this tendering, uh, uh, the typical schedule for lake throwdown for Sabonica is, is mid-September. So we will, we, there is really no, 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 no change, no delay in, in anything. So uh, it will be basically a, a normal season for the throwdown. Okay, Phil is next, followed by John Carew and then Eli Shantiri. Eli El Shantiri. Go ahead, Phil. Yes, uh, just is the, the scope of work on this just the, the sign on the high side of your the diagram you showed us, or is it on both sides of the dam that we're doing the work on the uh, uh, on the embankments? It will be both embankments, south embankment and, and the north side, the embankment on the north side. And, and uh, um, the new, where it's labeled new emergency spillway, is that uh, just uh, like gravel or uh, bigger stones than that? Or is it, 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 it will include reprop and, and gravel uh, on the top of it, right? Then, and, 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 and we feel the emergency spillway is a very important component because I forgot to mention during my presentation, but the existing structure does not have a emergency spillway. So in, in and with, with that settlement that is happening, you know, this is why we don't have the mechanism to uh, to to uh, safely pass any any extreme flood event right now, right? So if, if we had that uh, spillway in place, we would be able to manage any extreme flood events. Without, without you know, overtopping the structure. I, I just think uh, <clears throat> that's a, a tremendously important point that we, in doing this, we will have a, a, a way of dealing with a, an intense storm uh, yes. by, by having this spillway in place. And and if it's with riprap or 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 cement or whatever uh, or concrete, I should say, I don't think it's probably better with just the the riprap stuff. But you can do uh, 
the water can get through there without eroding the uh, the bank like it's set up to deal with that. And and uh, say even if there is a, th a heavy storm, you bypass the, the dam controlling the, the upper upper limit and, and stop the over overtopping, which as you have said is a major cause for earthen dam uh, failures throughout the world. And I guess just a final comment uh, I would make is, you know, thanks for uh, being versatile enough to look at what we might be able to do uh, to get this project underway, not go over the budget and protect the, the downstream, upstream and downstream communities. So congratulations on coming through with that uh, hero. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. I'll just get you to get you to lower your hand and uh, we'll go to John Carew. Uh, thanks, Chair, and, and thanks, Euro. Um, I'm supportive of the approach. At the same time, I'm a little cautious that we could encounter, even in our next round of bids, the same kind of challenges. So is there a fallback, fallback position? Um, and, and clearly keeping that in mind, uh, one of the reasons that we're doing this is because of dam safety. So if we do find ourselves still in a budgetary pressure situation, what is our precautionary position? Yeah, so that's that's a very good point. And we are aware that, you know, there are no guarantees for the second tender results, right? And we might be faced with a situation that we, we, we will receive uh, might, you know, we might not have um, uh, acceptable uh, submissions and we would then need to defer the, um, the construction to next year. So then that would be really a plan C that we, we will be looking at and developing and we might, we might be considering, you know, some emergency uh, mechanisms. We will, we will be looking at uh, potentially uh, uh, managing the, the lake and, and the water levels in a, in a way that we would be mitigating the risk that way uh, until we would, uh, you know, move into uh, construction. So that's really uh, the, 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 the plan C that we, we, we've been thinking of, but uh, we are basically developing uh, <laughs> to have it in place in, in case, you know, this uh, plan B will not work. Sally, I see your hand up. You're on mute, Sally. You're on mute. <clears throat> so I, I would just add to what Euro said. Um, one of the challenges we face is, of course, with the WECI funding. So if we don't move forward this year, uh, this project would have to reapply for the WECI funding next year. Now, during the discussions that um, Chris and Euro had with the WECI office, they indicated, well, the priority would still be the same, you know, all of the rationale that move this to, you know, near the top of the list on this year's WECI applications would still apply next year. But it's always the mix of proposals that they receive every year and where you fit in ranking in that. So um, to Euro's point, you know, we can't uh, assume that we're gonna get the funding would be number one. Number two is we have this systemic problem that we as a board, you as a board, and, and we encouraged others to write to the province on, and that is that the way the WECI program is administered is designed to ensure we have to pay as much as possible. By not notifying us until June that we would have the money made, you know, the whole delayed the whole tendering process. And I think this is something that, you know, if this, if this we're not successful in this round of tendering, we have to revisit with the province again and just hammer home with them the importance of us getting notice about those grants as early in the season as possible so that we can get competitive bids. The fact that we went out to tender in July, it, you know, I, we had discussed this as a board earlier about the risk we ran with that and, and it's embedded into the administration of the WECI program. So I just wanted to put that out there because this is something that we're gonna run into year after year until, year until they change how they administer that program. Thank you, Sally. I see John's hand is down. Uh, Eli. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I think uh, Sally, she gave me the segue to my questions because as I'm looking at the report, Mr. Chair, and maybe that's something somebody can explain it to me. 
uh, when we talk about uh, in the report on page three, and then we talk about the risk mitigation. So if, I'm, if I understand what Sally was saying, the problem is, is with, with funding itself more than anything. And, and we were pushed to, to get a, obviously back in a time where we know the price is gonna be uh, inflated because of the COVID-19 and, and the, the high cost of material. Is that fair to say, Sally, we don't have many choices here if we want to take advantage of this funding. Like, I mean, reading the report, you're not giving us really a lot of options. And I'm going by the report, not by what we should do, a uh, riprap or other. I'm, I'm not an engineer, but I'm looking at the report itself. And I don't see it's given us a lot of options if we want to take advantage of this funding. Can you explain that to me? Um, I think you've hit the nail on the head. That is, if we want to take you know, advantage of the funding that we've been allocated this year, this is the best approach that we could take. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I would like to say, though, there is a silver lining. If we're successful in this phased approach, um, is that uh, it does create uh, capacity within our capital program to possibly defer that work to a future date. Um, and uh, and focus that money on other things in, in our capital program. But um, I mean, I still think we run the risk of uh, higher bids than what we had budgeted. Um, so I don't know if I answered your question there, Eli, did I? <laughs> well, you are in a way because, I mean, I read the report, honestly, and I, 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 I see what the risk mitigation is and, and and then we go back to the funding, which is, is quite a bit. If we don't get that 50% funding eligibility, well, then, so even if you go out and, and hypothetically, again, I'm, I'm not trying to debate the project. I'm just trying to understand. Even if you go out and, and you, you got another tender and you got a maybe a little bit less or a little bit more or it's the same, but do you want to risk losing the funding who's eligible to you right now? in order to do this. That's where I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant. Like, we don't have much choices if you want to take advantage of this. You might qualify next time too, Who, who's to say, but you have to apply. And we know with those uh, politics play a factor, uh, everything play a factor. So um, are you willing to risk it? That's, my, that's the question I guess we need to ask ourselves as a decision body, can we risk you know, that losing that 50% or delay it for, you know, to, to find a little bit of saving somewhere. So I'm not sure if you have a comment on, like, I mean, it's the question to you is, can, can you afford the risk or we should just say, no, we can't lose that 50% eligibility right now. So we need to move forward and make it easy for us because that's your, that would be your recommendation to the board. So, so I, I would say uh, that what we've recommended to you is what we believe is the best approach at this time. It, it mitigates the risk, both in terms of the physical risk to the dam structure, as well as the financial risk to the organization. So call it, this is it. So you heard the general manager, and I, I believe she's absolutely right. If you go through the report itself, uh, I don't think we have many choices here. So, but thank you, Sally, for emphasize what's in the report in, in, in a way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, thank, thank you, Eli, for extracting clarity. That's, uh, I, think, I think that was the question that was, that was sitting in the minds of a lot of people, a lot of people around the screen uh, this afternoon. Uh, Phil, I see your hand up again. Did you have another comment? I just wanted to reinforce the, the wisdom of Euro's uh, approach to this, and that is, um, let's see what we can get done for what we've got in the in the budget, uh, I believe the, the scope of work that's uh, asked for here is far different than the expertise that's required to do that uh, dam structure. This is the what, what's what's asked for here is a kind of uh, approach that people like uh, Tomlinson or uh, uh, Kavanaugh or um, I've, I've been very impressed with how the bridge was done by Goldie. Uh, Moore, you know, it's an open process. The, 
this is straight, con you know, construction work. It's not uh, uh, something that that's requires real uncommon uh, engineering approaches to do to do this stuff. And if all we could, if, suppose it came in just, you know, more than we we had budgeted, just do the north part and put get that spillway stuff in. That's what I. So I think Eli is absolutely right. We 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 need to get take advantage of the funding we know is available. Let's see how much work we can get done for it. And and I believe uh, uh, that the, the the kind of work that's required is uh, will be uh, easier to get competitive bids on. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. John, I saw your hand up again. John Inglis. Yeah, um, my question was uh, referred to by Phil. Are, are we expecting this is going to be like half the cost of the original? What's what's the target that you're looking at, Euro? Uh, uh, even if it's half, we're still looking at a million and a half dollars, perhaps. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's a very good question. And our expectation is that uh, this, this reduced scope of work will fit within our budget, within our MVC budget. So, uh, so more than, yeah, more than a half less. So, yeah, I think we are pretty confident that the earthwork can be, can be completed uh, uh, within, within the budget. And uh, right. the second comment is, um, uh, creek crossings by ATVs below the earth embankment, I read, are have been damaging this thing in the past. How are we going to stop that in the future? Yes, yeah, so, so this is another uh, issue that we have been looking at now that, you know, the, obviously the new concrete structure would accommodate uh, ATV access. Uh, so we would be need to look at, uh, revisit this issue and, and, and see how the, the, uh, we, we can have uh, ATVs and vehicles uh, bypassing the structure through the downstream crossing because obviously that would damage uh, the new embankments or the embankments that we would be constructing, right? So we would need to find uh, a different solution, uh, maybe reopening the existing structure for the AT, ATV traffic. Uh, that would need to be a, a study completed if, if that's, this is a safe approach, right? Uh, and, and so, so yeah, uh, something that we would need to look into. Thanks, Yura. I don't see any other hands up for questions or comments. Any, uh, anyone else? Okay, we'll proceed to the motion. Uh, the motion, which was uh, moved by Chuck and seconded by Phil, is that the Board of Directors direct staff to A, cancel the tender, reject all bids received, B, adopt a phased approach for the dam reconstruction, C, Tender the first phase for construction in fall 2021. D, update the WECI funding agreement and E, secure updated permit approvals as required. All in favor of the recommended motion. I can see you all on the screen, so just raise your hand on the screen. Anyone opposed? The motion is carried. Uh, Mr. Chair, perhaps the person on the phone should vote too. Yes, thank you. Um, Cindy. Cindy. <laughs> do you, do, I'm in do you vote? You're in favor. Thank you. Yes. I do my best to accommodate the uh, <laughs> the those the the video absent. But uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Eli. That concludes the uh, the business for the emergency meeting. So uh, the next item is I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Oh, Sally, before we get to that. Please to note we met met your uh, requirement to get on to your next meeting, Mr. Chairman. So far, so good. Yeah. So I just wanted to mention, um, as Euro uh, stated, we're going to try to turn around a new tender package and get it out as soon as possible. Depending on you know the dates and closures and the like, we may require another emergency or not emergency, but special meeting to deal with the award of that contract because as I think everybody appreciates time is of the essence on this. So I just wanted to give you a heads up that uh, that may be necessary or it may coincide with uh, our next meeting. Thanks for the heads up, Sally. Good okay, luck. now, hmm? yeah, good, exactly. So now I'm looking for that motion to adjourn so I can go and get on with my two hour workshop. Uh, moved by Paul Kehoe, seconded by Councillor Elshin Tiri. All in favor? Okay, the motion is adjourned at 536. Thank you everyone for coming and we'll see you, uh, see you next week at the board meeting.
Thanks All right. Thank Take care, everyone. Thank you. Apologies to Chris McGuire for not recognizing the name of our engineer. <laughs> Engineers are important. I do believe it, Chris. You owe him a Christmas present, Phil. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it under $10. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good to see you.